This terrestrial contamination excuse is as becoming as ridiculous and overused as the classic The astronauts were lucky that there were no major solar flares claim. If sample 66095 is indeed the breccia that the wiki vandal is referring to, it looks as though he may be trying to cover for the implausibility of the terrestrial contamination excuse. Because he goes on to attribute this ferric iron to changes in electron energy due to cosmic ray exposure. That's the actual explanation on the Vandal site. I am not kidding. It reads clear as day. To the best of this author's knowledge, ferric iron was found in only one impact breccia sample, and its presence is believed to be the result from changes in electron energy level structure due to exposure to galactic cosmic rays. This is more changing the goalposts. First they insist that ferric iron should be in the lunar samples if they originate from meteorites or terrestrial rocks, but when you show that they do contain ferric iron, they just blame it on cosmic ray exposure. Which is it? A minute ago, the presence of ferric iron was the telltale sign of exposure to the atmosphere. Now it can also be introduced by cosmic rays. If cosmic rays can create ferric iron on the moon, why hype about its alleged absence in the first place? I can't help but see a pattern here. Someone says there is no water in the Apollo samples. Find evidence of water in the Apollo samples? They claim it's contamination because the rocks contain no ferric iron. Discover that the rocks contain ferric iron? And they attribute it to either cosmic ray exposure or terrestrial atmospheric exposure. I mean, seriously people, how misplaced can someone's trust be? It's like insisting the sky is green, despite overwhelming evidence to the contrary. Furthermore, this calls into question what geologists truly mean by no ferric iron in the Apollo samples. When a geologist tells you that there isn't any ferric iron, does he mean just that, or does he mean there's no ferric iron except for the ferric iron that we attribute to contamination? Using that logic, you could say that no rocks at all contain ferric iron. After all, terrestrial rocks obviously didn't contain ferric iron when they first formed. It got there over their long stay within the atmosphere. Interestingly, Bell and Mao go on to report that the ferric iron in the Apollo samples makes them differ from the Soviet lunar samples. There is a linear relationship between the average iron content and the absorption coefficient of a strong polarized crystal field band at 1,250 nanometers in the Luna 29 plagioclase, a soil that is not reportedly oxidized or hydrated. However, the iron values of plagioclase crystals from the altered Apollo 15 and 16 samples fall off this line, a factor that may be related to the presence of significant proportions of ferric iron. If Webb wanted to build a case on the absence of ferric iron in the moon samples, he should have evidently gone with the Soviet samples. Of course, he later goes on to claim that the Soviet samples have no bearing on whether the Apollo samples are real or fake. So that doesn't help his case much. Regardless, it can't change the fact that, contrary to what Webb claims, chipping away the fusion crust of meteorites would not remove a significant portion of helium-3 and the ferric iron to total iron ratios in Apollo samples are commensurate to terrestrial rocks after being heated in vacuum chambers for days straight. His last objection to the use of meteorites is zap pits, but before we get into that, there is one correction I need to make.
Thank you.